All right, what's going on guys? Um, I am starting my journey from Texas to Florida. So behind me, I've got the Eco Diesel right here and I've got my 24 foot enclosed car trailer. So I'm hooking it up. I figured I'd go quickly through the process of hooking this thing up in case you guys ever want to tow with your 1500. I'll show you what I've installed on this 1500 to be able to you know, tow the safest in my opinion. I've pretty much put every option or thing that you could possibly put on for towing since I've been doing a lot of towing with this Eco Diesel. Um, so let me flip this around. I'll show you guys all the things that I've installed that make towing this pretty decent. So here we go. We got the Eco Diesel. And if you guys haven't seen this truck on the channel, we've spiced it up quite a bit. So it's a Laramie. Um, it has a 355 gear ratio. I know they came with different gear ratios. This one's got a 355. And we got a 24 foot enclosed Pace American trailer. So um, if you guys are wondering what's in the box, right now all of my home belongings are in here. So I'm doing the first run with just all home stuff. Um, it would be nice to take one of the vehicles, but it took forever to load this with all that stuff. So I'm gonna do one run just with this stuff and then we'll come back and start getting the vehicles. So as far as hooking this thing up, I've got a Kurt weight distribution hitch. Um, and then everything else, I don't wanna say it becomes optional, but it's just a good idea to have. So of course you got your hitch. This one has uh, the bars for the weight distribution. So it's a special hitch. Um, they're not exactly cheap. I managed to find this one used, like barely used. It was uh, brand new. The guy used it for like one trip. But um, keep your eye out on the local classifieds if you're looking for something like this. So what it does is you can see here and then it's got all these shims in there. And it essentially, you have to calculate your truck and uh, you have to do a little bit of setup first before you can start towing. And what you do is you end up pitching this thing down and what it does is the bars and this is going to all make sense in a second the bar is going to here and what you're doing is you're taking that angle and you're pitching it so essentially you're driving 90 degree bars into the ground and then you end up hooking them up to here and it's pulling up so the best explanation that i've heard it explained is it's like taking the handles on a wheelbarrow and picking them up on the back of your trailer so it's relieving the load at this pivot point so here's the bars here that's one right there. So you can see it's got the chain on the other side. And then this is how it looks installed. So you can see there it comes out and then it's got tension under it right there on the chain. So it's picking up on the back of the truck. So you can see there, this trailer is fully loaded right now and the jack post is off the ground. I haven't even added air to the bags yet and it's looking pretty decent. So as far as we like, you don't want the truck to be up in the back. A little bit of squats okay pretty much level i haven't done anything like this is factory suspension on the truck so you guys know that the trucks come with a little bit of rake and uh that's how we're sitting so right now and then you're also going to see these some guys will run just one um we're running the full full gig here so i got two of them so from this little ball joint to this ball joint on both sides essentially what is in here are a set of brake pads and you crank how much tension you want on these little pads here and it's as you can see your sway control so when you get the sway going it's like slowing down any of that sway action and if that wasn't enough the truck also has airlift 5000 bags in it so we've got like legit airbags not the ones that are like bag in spring i don't know if you guys can see they can probably see right there we got a full-on airbag on both sides um i don't have like the air pump system i never really felt it was necessary because it's not like i'm adjusting the stuff on the fly so what we got over here is two air nozzles i have heard uh mixing opinions whether or not to uh put this into one so that they're both equalized rather than trying to separate how much air on each one either way let me show you how i put these on some guys um you know they'll use the hand crank I found just using, my buddy actually told me he uses the floor jack and once he told me that he did that, it seemed so much easier. So rather than sitting there having to, you know, maybe if you have an electric one, but it's rather than sitting here trying to crank everything like crazy, I just put the, uh, I just put the weight distribution bar in and then I use the floor jack just to lift it up and hook it on. So let me show you that. Our bar, we're gonna put it in here until it clicks. And then this goes up to here. And if you guys do or don't know, you can only have a maximum of four uh links exposed four or maybe five but that's the max you don't want this thing bent over like a banana and you don't want if you start like kind of hooking onto the low ones then it could potentially get into the like the frame of your trailer so that's those are the reasons for that at least as far as i know 
So this goes down. You also have this bar to help you assist. But by the time we lift it up with the jack, you don't really have to do a whole lot. Of course, we've got our safety work boots on. OSHA approved work boots. And yeah, I just do like this. And you can see, you guys can pretty much see how it operates. So see how the trailer goes down. And as soon as I start lifting up on this, you can see the trailer start to lift up. So what I'm doing is putting this on here. And then count my links, make sure it's equal to the other side. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna hook it on this one. And then I'm gonna grab this. And you can see how easy it was instead of trying to fight it like a maniac with, without the floor jack. Put your cotter pin back in. And then we can let off on that. So if you guys noticed before the distance, there was probably half that distance below this and obviously we didn't adjust it. So now I can actually, on this jack, I can take out the, the foot. And we're ready to rumble here pretty much. So let me put the anti-sway bars on, show you guys how that works. So these have cotter pins in the end. And there is a left and a right. I can never seem to distinguish which one which before I actually start messing with it. But you can find it pretty quickly. Obviously you can see the cups on that side. Spots on the other one. Probably should mark them so I don't have to keep doing that every time. But there is a left and a right to this. So here we go. Okay, so that goes there. And then see how it like, but depending on which way the trailer was facing, it wasn't perfectly straight. You can't get it on, loosen it up. And then this slides, that goes on there. And then we just run our fodder pins up in here. Put a little bit of tension on it. You don't have to go crazy with it. So we can adjust these once we get out on the road. But yeah, you just kind of you don't want to like crank this as tight as you can. But I just want to put a little bit of tension on it, and then that's pretty much it. So let me put the other one on, and then uh, we'll wrap this up. All right. So next up on the list, kind of just pull it out and get it on flat ground. You see, we got a little bit more squat in the back, and I haven't put any uh, air in the airbags. So what I'm going to do is. You're gonna need, well, you can do it two ways. You can go to the gas station if you want, but you see here, I just got a cheap little pump. Uh, it's actually my backup pump, my other one I don't have with me, but you're gonna notice like, even if you plug it into the back seat, you can't get to the back of the truck. So I'll link this down below. It's just an extension harness. So rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, this is just, uh, I believe a 20 foot extension. So just like a, you know, cigarette lighter extension, and then you can make it all the way to the back here. So. Let's go ahead. I haven't even opened this yet. I just bought it, so I can open it. Let's use it. All right, so there we go. Now we can reach. The other reason why I thought that would be cool is if you ever needed to fill up your trailer tires, you're on the road, that you could actually probably make it all the way there. So um, anyways, now let's go ahead. I'm gonna put, um, I'm probably gonna try like 20 pounds and see where we're at. I'll start there. But just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, that's how we're sitting right now. It's not terrible, but I don't have any air in the airbags, so it'll be a little bit firmer ride if I at least put some in there. I think there might only be two and a half, maybe five pounds. I haven't checked in a while, but um, it'll make it a little bit more firm instead of so mushy in the rear as well. And that's how our trailer's sitting. So there we go, that's 20 pounds in there. Truck is pretty much dead level, I would say. And trailer is looking pretty decent too. So kind of have to play with it as you go, but we'll try it out on 20 pounds. But um, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. If you guys found this helpful or informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up for me. I'll link the airbags, um, that extension, <coughs> and the stuff that I used as well down in the description. You guys can check it out. But if you guys are interested in this stuff, uh, we post a lot more on this channel. So check it out. We'll see you guys on the next video.